Good evening, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Yes, you are right here in the right place. This is the prayer book camp for all nations. And we're here at prayer school 104. I know that this is um this is right in the middle of the week, and you, you know, you might have other things that you're doing, but you've taken out time. I want you to know that God will honor you because you have honored his word, you have honored his presence. Thank you for joining us. My name is Agatha Demiju, and I'm your host here at the Prayer Book Camp for All Nations. You're welcome again to Prayer School 104, Session 3. A wonderful session awaits us tonight. God is right here already waiting for you and I to teach us the beautiful concept and subject of prayer. He has also sent us a very, very wonderful vessel this week. We, I mean, I can assure you that every week will, will, will be like a build up on the previous week. Last week we had our wonderful sister Ebo Oriade, and this week we have our very own Minister Fumi QJ. You know what she's like. So get ready, get your notepads, get your note, um, get yourself in a comfortable place without distraction so that you can enjoy what God has prepared for us. So for me, I'm privileged to introduce you to the family right here. Of course, you're part of the family. You are always a part of this house. So yeah, over to you. You can lead us in prayer, teach us. And at the end, we're, we're going to be taking some questions. Make sure that you put your questions in the Q&A box because Fumi is ready to answer those questions through the help of the Holy Spirit. God bless you and over to you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Agatha. Seriously, I really appreciate you. God, you're a God sent. Hallelujah. Let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much. Thank you for what you have already done. Thank you for what you've completed in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gift of righteousness. Thank you for the privilege of sonship. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you because he's our helper tonight. Holy Spirit, thank you for your friendship, your leadership. We acknowledge you. You do what you do best. You teach us. Give us instructions for life. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much. Thank you to all my um. Pastor Agatha, thank you. Thank you, um, Sister Ngozi. Uh, bon, thank you also very much for taking out of your time, of your busy schedule to attend tonight's meeting. Such a privilege again to be able to share the word of God. And we're all learning. We're all on a journey. Tonight, I'm going to be majoring. Um, I'm going to be talking about developing stamina in prayer. For those who missed the, the, the last three prayer schools, when we... One of the things I said, I remember, I think at prayer school 101, was that when we stand in prayer, we stand in our office as kings or priests. Priests to offer up incense of worship, prayer, and adoration. Priesthood and kingship. Revelations chapter 1 very clearly tells us that in 156, that from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. If it's your own Bible, mark it. He is the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, he has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. He has made us kings. He has made us priests unto God. This is repeated verbatim in Revelations 5.10. He has made us kings and priests. It's two egg, two capacities, two offices. First Peter 2.9 articulates that very clearly. He says we are royal priesthood. We're a holy nation, a royal priesthood, double, double edged office. What does it mean to be a priest? What does it mean to be a king? To be a king, pray, praying as a king. I remember, if I remember 101 accurately, kings make decrees, kings legislate, kings declare, kings speak. When a king needs something, he speaks. A believer is empowered to mandate, to enforce a change on the earth. This includes nations, human bodies, communities, families, your children, your finances, the weather. Kings make decrees. Kings legislate. Kings legislate. Kings make decrees. 
When we pray as a priest, hallelujah, what does a priest do? A priest offers up worship and incenses unto God. He offers up worship. He, he offers up, he offers worship, incenses to God. We are communicating with him back and forth. He's giving us insight, directions, revelations, navigations, leadership. Revelations 5, it talks about our priestly ministries. He says, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, full of incense, full of incense, which are prayers of the saints, full of incense, which are prayers of the saints. Revelations 8, 3 to 4. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. Much incense, much incense. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from angels' hands. Much incense. So when we stand in our capacity to pray, we are offering as a priest incense. Our prayers are incense. That's what that 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 but that revelation clearly tells us. So we see clearly that we can stand in our priestly and in our kingly capacity. Go listen to prayer school 101. Then we have dimensions in prayers. When we talk in first Timothy 2, Paul was writing to Timothy. He says, First, I exhort you. First of all, first thing, pronto, uno, first thing, first of all, supplications, number one. Prayers, number two. Intercessions, number three. And giving of thanks be made for all men. He said this again when he was writing to the Philippian church, when he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, big, small, major, minor, by prayer, one. Supplication, two. With thanksgiving. It shows that these are all different kinds of prayers. Let your requests be made known to God. Hallelujah. In prayer school 101, I, I broke down what supplication is. Supplication is not a casual or careless attitude of prayer. It is a heartfelt, humble, earnest entreaty or request. If a request is not made in a heartfelt, fervent, and earnest manner, it's not supplication. That was what supplication meant. Most times, supplication is when you are, you are, you are standing for yourself. You are making this demand, this request for yourself. Intercession. The word intercession, however, differs from inter supplication. Intercession is you are standing in the gap. We see that in, in the New Testament when we're talking about Jesus' ministry in Hebrews 7. He says, where also is able also to save unto the uttermost that come unto him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever lives to make intercession for us. This is also used twice. We see that this is used twice in Romans. In the book of Romans, the, the, the intercession is broken down when he was talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Intercession goes deeper than just praying for people. Don't get confused when I say praying for people. No, it's more than just praying, you know, casually praying for people. There is a depth to this. There is a, there is a, a tenacity to this. There is a, a demand, it's an intervention, a mediation, an arbitration, a negotiation. So we see that clearly demonstrated in the book of Genesis chapter 18. When Abraham was standing for Lot and, and interceding for that God to save him. So intercession is standing on the behalf of others, but it is with the same intensity, with the same fervency that we make these prayers. For me, where are you going with all this? Where are you going to land with all this? When we talk about these two kinds of prayer, we need the common thread within the, with, with these two types of prayer, supplication and intercession is perseverance. If you're writing notes, write that down. It's perseverance. It's not a one-time prayer. It's, it's the kind of prayer that you pray over and over and over again. You are literally wrestling for a change. It is on your mind in the morning, in the afternoon, at night. You are relentless. You are restless until it's done. You are staking your claim. You are insisting on your rights. You are like a bulldog. This nation must be saved. These children need to turn back to God. This, my brother, needs to serve the Lord. You are continually praying, perseveringly, consistently, persistently, until it is done. Sometimes it will take days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months, even years. 
with this type of prayers, you require a relative degree of stamina so that you do not get wearied. Hallelujah. A relative degree of stamina. Hallelujah. Please unmute yourself, ma'am. Apologize for that. Okay, so with this type of prayer, you need a relative degree of stamina. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without season. The first time I saw that scripture, how is that possible for us to pray without season? The Amplified says, be persistent and be unseasoned in prayer. Be unseasoned in prayer. CSB, pray constantly. CEB, pray continually. Never stop praying. TPT, pray until you become a prayer. The only way that you can fulfill the scriptures is to have a relative degree of stamina when we pray. Colossians 4, 2, continue in prayer. Continue steadfastly in prayer. Steadfastly in prayer. Be earnest. Be unwearied in your prayer life. Hallelujah. Persevere in prayer is what the Derby translation says. Keep persisting. For you to be able to persist in prayer, there is a relative degree of stamina required. Hallelujah. Stamina is a strength of physical constitution, power to endure. Power to endure. Strength of physical constitution. The Webster's Dictionary defines this as the bodily or mental capacity to sustain a prolonged Stressful effort or activity. Selah. The capacity to sustain a prolonged stressful effort or activity. It is synonymous with endurance. The moral or emotional strength to continue with a difficult process. It is staying power. If you're writing those, please put those two down. Endurance. Staying power. Perseverance is always used alongside with stamina. Hallelujah. How many of people, how many people saw the Olympics, for example? Those people are trained. They are they, 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 they have they have trained their bodies to endure. They have the same power, especially if they are doing a long distance haul. It's different from a sprint. A marathon requires stamina. It requires staying power. It requires endurance. Perseverance is always used alongside speed and strength. Paul was writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. He says, endure therefore hardship. Hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hardship, labor as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's what the DRA transition says. Endure hardship. I said supplication and intercessory prayers are the types of prayer that you need this stamina for where you are standing and you are standing and you continue to stand and you continue to stand. This prayer is not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the weak. Sometimes you pray for weeks, months. Stay in power. The fortitude to stay until you see a change and a shift is what endurance and stamina in prayer is about. If you're writing notes, write it down. Write this down. Developing stamina in prayer is a product of discipline and consistency. It's a product of discipline and consistency. There is no human being that has won the Olympics, that has won any, any kind of sport, that has not trained themselves to be disciplined. Discipline and consistency. They run in the winter. They run in the spring. They run in the autumn. They run when it's hot. They run when it's cold. No matter the weather they are running, they are training, they are jogging, they are pushing themselves. They are not defaced by, sometimes their body bleeds, they keep going. Sometimes things happen, they keep going. They don't take, they don't, they don't take breaks or relax or look, I'm just going to indulge myself. No, they have a diet. They have a discipline. Hallelujah. Proverbs 24 says in verse 10, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. TLB says you are a poor specimen if you can't stand the pressure of adversity. <laughs> NSG says, message translation, if you fall to pieces in a crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. 
the, 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 the two things, major things I want us to take away from today is discipline and consistency. As I said, inter intercessory prayer and supplication prayers, which I said, you can go back to our video 101 and watch it and I've defined it before, just, just a few, 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 few minutes ago. They are the prayers that fall into this category. You, are, you, are, you have a need. It has stayed for one year, two years, three years. You know the kind of prayer you are going to pray is not the prayer of faith. You need, a, you need some stamina in a place of prayer to birth that which rightfully belongs to you. Isaiah 66, very powerful scripture. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a man child. Verse 8, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? This was talking about the nation of Israel. But as soon as Zion was in labor, as soon as the church prays, she gives birth. And you know when you are in labor, it's not sometimes, it's not a five-minute thing. When you travel, you stay there until you birth what you desire. In the New Testament, I'm not going to talk a lot about continued prayer. Because we see that all over the New Testament. I've read a few scriptures to us tonight. Ephesians 6, 18 says, pray at all times. All times. Pray at all times. In every occasion. Every time. Luke 18, 1 says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. There's, that Jesus himself says, men ought always to pray. Which means you need a requisite amount of perseverance, endurance, persistent stamina in prayer. If we take, for example, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. When Jesus was talking to us about the widow, the persistent widow, it's a few scriptures, but I'm just going to read it. He says, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Jesus told a parable, this is the Amplified, to the effect that they ought always to pray, not to turn coward, not to faint, not to lose heart, not to give up. Don't let your faith sleep. Second verse. He said in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected or considered man. Which means he cannot be a God. He's not a godly man. That's not God. I know some people think, oh, maybe it's God withholding, but that's, not, that's for another class. I don't have too much time to delve into that today. Verse 3 says, and there was, a, there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him saying, protect and defend and give me justice against my adversary. Protect me, defend me, give me justice. Hey, but the Bible says she came to him repeatedly. She came to NLT. She came to him repeatedly. And for a while he would not. But later he said to himself, do I have neither reverence for God or fear man? or respect, can you imagine, or respect, or consider any man. He didn't do all that. that which just, my, my notes, I said, don't let time affect your faith. Don't let time, time, hallelujah. Yet, because this widow continues to bother me, I will defend and protect and avenge her, lest she gives me intolerable annoyance and wear me out by her continual coming. And at the last, she come and rail me or assault me or strangle me. And Nelty says, this woman is driving me crazy. She is wearing me out of my const she with her constant request. Her persistence was wearing down his resistance. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. I will not our just God defend and protect his elect, his chosen one who cried to him day and night. Will he defy them and delay help on their behalf? I tell you, he will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. Crying day and night, the Amplified says, is relentlessly declaring the word and standing in faith and prayer. Which means to be able to do this, there is a requisite amount of endurance required. When the Son of Man comes, will he find persistence in faith on the earth? 
notice the widow's strategy. She will not take no for an answer. She was moved. She was not moved by his, unmoved by his continual saying no. She was relentless. She was insisting. She did not stop until she got what she wanted. She refused to give up. Tenacious, stubborn, persistent, keep coming and will not quit. Requires stamina. When it comes to the things that belong to you, you must not take no. You must not take no. For me, why do we need this stamina? Why is this stamina so important? One of the reasons we need stamina in prayer is so that we do not experience what I call a faith failure. A faith failure is the spirit equivalent of what a heart failure is to the body. Faith failure is an abortion of a faith journey. That means you start on a journey of faith, but something happens and you couldn't close the deal. It's a short circuiting of a journey of victory. It's called a faith failure. When your faith does not produce the required or expected outcome, the end result is a faith failure. Faith is not a project, by the way. Faith is our lifestyle. I know people say, oh, they are in faith, whether they are not in faith. No, faith is our lifestyle. The just shall live by faith, repeated four times in the Bible. The righteous, the our faith. A lot of people think, oh, for me, but what is faith? I don't have faith. Look, faith is our confidence in the ability of God to come through for us all the time. That's my version. It is your confidence in God's ability that God will come for, through, through, through for me all the time. Faith is the bridge <laughs> with the spirit realm. Faith is what connects the spirit and the natural realm. So what this kind of praying, stamina required for praying so that we don't experience a faith failure by being short-circuited in prayer. Remember Jesus said to Peter in Luke 22, he says, I have prayed for you that your faith does not fail. I have prayed for you. It is possible for faith to fail. You, the, the literal direct translation meant to separate. The devil wanted to separate him from his faith. But when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. The Amplified says, I have made supplication for you, earnest entreaty, that your faith does not fail. The, why do we need stamina? So that we do not experience faith failure. When do we need, why do we need this stamina? When we are enforcing a major change. When you are, men, Elijah was enforcing a change in the meteorology which is the weather of that nation. You can't do that in five minutes. No, there was a requisite amount of persistence, stamina in prayer for him to accomplish that. Remember, he told the servant, go once. The servant went seven times. Imagine your pastor says, do something once. He says, oh, you have the victory. You don't see anything. It was day. I said, pastor, I didn't see anything. And say, go back again, two days. Will you go back the third day? No, I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, just tell me. No, but the guy was persistent. He knew something had to move. He knew something had to change. He knew what was his legal right to do. When you are enforcing a major shift, we need stamina to pray. James chapter 5 verse 17 says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. He had emotions. He has his downside. He knew what it was to be hungry. He knew what it was to be afraid. He ran away from Jezebel. He didn't want to die. He had self-pity. He had low self-esteem. He says, I'm the only one, every one of them. So there's nothing you're going through that Elijah did not go through. He went through every single one of these emotional up and down that people go through. But the Bible tells us in James 5, 17, that he prayed. He prayed earnestly that it will not rain. And it rained not on the earth, but a space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And he prayed again. Because some people have this thing that, oh, I prayed once. I know. He prayed again this was such a phenomenal story that it had to be recorded in the new testament even though it happened in first kings 18 he prayed passionately he was a man of like passion but had the stamina to pray in a place of prayer why do we need this stamina we need this stamina because we need to establish the sense of god when people get saved they don't automatically stand because you wish them to or because they answered the altar call. There is a requisite amount of prayer that needs to go into this kind of prayer to establish the saints. Second Thessalonians 1, 11, whereof we pray always for you. 
We pray always for you that our God will count you worthy of his calling. This was not a one-time prayer. No. Remember what um, um, Paul said in Galatians 4.9, my little children, of whom I travel in birth again, again, until Christ be formed in you. Is that, that's the reason we don't do reset my seed once a year or once every two weeks. We do it every week. Persistent, consistent, just staying there in the place of prayer. Paul commended a chap in Colossians 4.2. 412. He says, Epaphras. Remember Epaphras? He says, He's one of you. He's a servant of Jesus Christ. He salutes you. Why? Always laboring fervently for you in prayers. He was laboring. Laboring means there is a work, there is a pressure, there is something that needs to be done. Hallelujah. We need stamina to transition to change levels. People don't just change levels. You don't just move from one level to no. When you want to go with the speed of God, the speed of the Holy Ghost, there is a stamina required in the place of prayer. Remember Jude chapter 1, verse 20. You mount up, you climb higher and higher like an edifice. Hallelujah. Why do we need stamina? Because we have a relentless enemy. You need the stamina. You need stamina to persevere in prayer because you have a relentless enemy. Look, I know we live in the in the you know we live in the very Western world. You know you can you cannot medicate a devil. You cannot apply therapy or counseling against a spiritual force. Discipline is good, but it cannot address a spiritual issue. Every time you are up against something that doesn't seem to shift, even though you've prayed for it several times over, there must probably be a spiritual dimension. There is probably a, a, an influence behind it, especially if you observe that there is a pattern, a, a pattern that you see this thing is happening to your grandmother, it happened to your mother, now it's happening to you. And the sister who told me in church, oh, everybody in their family has breast cancer. She has breast cancer as we speak. She's, she's winning breast cancer. She's won that, that battle. Because yes, last week she called me, she said for me 99% cancer free. I said, you're 100%. You're going to be discharged. Amen? But these things are patterns. She didn't have to wait for it before she, and she, her family is, oh, it runs in the family. No. When there is that kind of a thing, you know, there is a spiritual force behind it. Like I said, counseling doesn't solve these kind of issues. For those kind of prayers that you need to stand against these issues, you cannot pray once. There is a stamina required to stand against it. <laughs> One man of God that like says you cannot win a you cannot win, win with a knife in a gunfight. No, 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 no. You need to come with the right ammunition. You must revoke the ask access the enemy has to your life. You must shut down the source and the access. And this thing comes with stamina and persistence in prayer. First Peter 5 8. <laughs> That's a very popular scripture. Be sober, be vigilant. Like I said, you need stamina because you have a relentless enemy. The enemy is not going to go on a vacation. No. He doesn't take a break. He, he hits you with a passion. You, 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 be sober. Be awake. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, he walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist? Whom resist? The Greek means to stand against, to put pressure, to stand in opposition. It is a word that demonstrates the attitude of one who is fiercely opposing to something and therefore determines he will do everything within his power to resist it, to stand against it, to defy the opposition. You will stand. You will keep standing. I am going to be here until I carry my stuff. And uh, an expanded and more contemporary interpretation will read, stand firmly against the devil. Be unbending, be unyielding in the way you resist him. That child is not serving God, don't give up. We're up against a serious contender, but we have victory. But, he, but you have to take this kind of stand. And when he sees that you don't give up, he will talk still around like a criminal. Resist, he will flee from you in terror. The devil tried, down, tried to wear down Jesus the temptations in the wilderness but we see how jesus won hallelujah i'm going to run now how do we develop this stamina how one of it is like i said discipline and consistency discipline if that's the only thing you get out from tonight i'll be i'll be, I'll be, I'll be my job will be done 
we must develop a routine of prayer. A routine. Somebody say, oh, but that's religious. Got it? No. If you want to have stamina in the place of prayer, you must have a routine of prayer. Men like Daniel had a routine of prayer. He could not be, his routine could not be ignored. In fact, he was prosecuted. And they prosecute you because of your prayer life. I ask myself that question every day. Fool me, are you praying enough that somebody else can, somebody can hang you? If you say, say people, got the number of, are you, have you done, are you done enough? Establish a time of prayer for yourself at a particular time, if required. When you start, it's necessary to have a diligence and a routine of prayer, old school way. Jesus himself had a place and a time of prayer. Remember in Luke 21, verse 37, he was teaching in the temple. And at night, he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. Luke 6, 12, it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. He, they knew where he went. That's why it was easy to arrest him. He was always there in prayer. The Bible says he continued all night in prayer. Discipline time of prayer. If you can start with, if you, you, on this, you've been on this prayer platform for a whole year, I'm expecting that you can pray for at least 30 minutes as a stretch. Discipline. Every nine o'clock, I will shut off the phone, shut off social media, and pray for 30 minutes. Start with a routine, a discipline. That's one of the first ways to develop a stamina in prayer. Be disciplined. Whether it's winter, whether it's snow, snow, summer, whether it's wind, it's snowing, whatever, you must show up at that place of prayer at that time. If we start from that way, 30 minutes, you graduate to one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, then two hours, two hours, 30 minutes, then three hours, four hours, that, then you keep going. Because you are this discipline. The guy that goes to pull a lot of weight, he didn't start by pulling the weight in one day. Nobody starts by pulling the weight in one day. No. They started with one kg, then two kg, then three kg. They started to pull, you know, then they went up. Now they lift weights. Have you ever seen all these brothers that have six pack? Do you think they got that six pack in one hour? Do you think they got it in two? Do you think they got it in a week? You think they got it in one month? Some of them have been training for years. Some of them four years, five years, six years. And then it starts to show. Their discipline starts to show. The discipline on a Christian in a prayer life starts to show. It begins to yield consistent results. It begins to yield consistent results. The activities of the spiritual become evident. Your eyes begin, begin to see. That's another class. You cannot say you are you are a Christian and you don't see anything. You just sleep. You don't dream. You don't know what the nothing happens. You don't know what the next steps are. How does God talk to you? A place of prayer, a disciplined place of prayer, will open your eyes, open your begin to see stuff. Discernment begins to be active. And God can you serve a God who doesn't speak to you, doesn't talk to you, doesn't show anything? Oh no, God is not like that. God will show you. You will not be you will not be stranded before that thing comes. He's shown you how to escape it. Hallelujah. Develop a consistent and routine in prayer, just like our Lord Jesus Christ, just like our, our Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 1. Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the night hour, they had the hour of prayer, which was our own hour of prayer. Don't just do it haphazardly, especially if you want to get have stamina. Then I'm going to be talking about the place of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is not just him that helped us to get born again. The gift of speaking in tongues, I think I've said this before, I think I say it in every meeting, is not a decoration. It's not to tag on at the end of our prayers. One of the way we develop capacity in prayer is when we speak in tongues. Because your, your understanding is limited and you can only pray in your understanding for a little window before you start repeating yourself. Help me, Lord. Oh, Lord, help me now. Help me. Help me. And I think I, I just have about a minute. So I will just, you know, help me, Lord. No, no, no. We're, pray in the Holy Spirit consistently. Tell me why? Because we have gaps in knowledge. We don't know everything. We know in part. But he knows everything. So when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we're bringing it up to the same. We're bringing it. We, we are asking him to help us align with God's plan for our life. Speaking in tongues, like I said the last time, is not an optional extra. 
It's not that you don't know how to pray. Romans 8 says, we, it's not, it didn't say we do not know how to pray. It says we do not know how to pray as we ought. But he prays perfect prayers. He knows how to pray. He knows what to pray. He knows who to, where to go to. So when we engage him, we accomplish more. It, it is impossible to develop a prayer stamina without understanding and leveraging the ministry of the Holy Spirit, especially speaking in tongues. He gives you revelations, aligns you with God's intention because he knows God's plan. He knows God's plan for your life. He is God. He knows how to get you on track with destiny. Everything comes into alignment when we spend a significant amount of time praying in the Holy Spirit. He is the one that, so if we've not built that stamina, this is <laughs> stamina 101. Stamina 101 means I pray in the spirit for a minimum of a certain number of time every day. Then I increase it as a, just like the person that is lifting the weight. I start with 30 minutes. Then I go to 45. Then I go to one hour. Then one and a half. Then two. Then two and a half. Then three. Then you are getting more. Four. Five. Amen. The Holy Spirit, everything comes into alignment when we spend a significant amount of time praying in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6. Paul talked about the whole armor of God. And then he crowned it on praying always with all prayer. Remember, we talked about prayer and supplication, intense, earnest, entreaty. How? In the spirit, in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. In the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. My panelists, I am ready. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we're going to take some questions. Over to you, panelists. You've got your questions ready. Umi is ready to take the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Minister Fumi. <laughs> um, the first question reads, how do I overcome discouragement in prayer? I think the, that word, when you, when you say you're discouraged in prayer, is because you have not, not seen results. A lot of people get discouraged when they don't see results. And the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. However, if you like one of the things I said in prayer school 101, when there are different kinds of prayer, and I think Pastor Agatha has mentioned it a boom based on it last week. The who and what are you praying to? Because a lot of times, the, every time we pray, we channel our prayer to God, forgetting that we have somebody. The Bible talks about we have an adversary whose ministry is to resist us. So sometimes when we have experienced resistance, it's not because God has not answered us. It's because there's an enemy out there who's out to resist us. Even Paul said, I wanted to come to you once and again. But Satan blocked me. Satan hindered me. Satan delayed me. Every time we experience delay, discouragement, it's not God. God is not the one withholding for us. He's given, given us freely all things to enjoy. I think you should listen to that, 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 that one-on-one again. It just helps to give the perspective to this. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Next question says, good evening. I'm praying for a building to minister to children. I've been told not to keep praying for it because God has heard your request. My question is, should I continuously and fervently pray for this? Yes, because you need a building. And the day you ask God for that building, he made provision for that building. One of the things I tell myself is that there's nothing you need that is in heaven. Everything we need is already on earth. The building you need is already somewhere. The Holy Spirit has to navigate you to that building. It's not, God is not going to drop a building from heaven. One of the things I, <laughs> I was saying to myself yesterday, they don't spend dollar in heaven. Everything you need, God has given us all things that pertain to this life and godliness. There's nothing he's withholding from us. That building you need is somewhere. And, and, and permit me to say this. I think I said this when we had prayer school 101. When we're moving to the area we move now, we needed a building, we needed a house. Every house here costs about a million dollars. Where are we going to get that from? Thank God for the provision. 
But God knew there was a house and he had prearranged one for us. So we had to pray until the property came out. Everything you need is here. There's nothing in heaven. You, you keep talking, praying in tongues about it. Speak, uh, speaking to the Holy Spirit about Keep praying in tongues about it. He knows where it is. He knows who to connect you to. He knows how to navigate you until you get the building. Please don't stop praying. Fervently in the Spirit about it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you very much, Sister Fumi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can very well. Okay, wonderful. So then the next question is, um, how do we continue to build the stamina stamina and be persistent even when we can't see the answers we have been praying for for years praise the lord <laughs> that's such a valid question two things if you are going in the only the only two reasons why we don't get results in prayer one just like when you write an exam there are only two reasons why people fail an exam either they wrote the wrong things or they didn't write enough there's nobody that goes into an examination hall and then write, plans to fail. It's either he didn't write enough or he wrote the wrong things. Every time there's a failure, every time there's a prayer failure, step back. It's not God's fault. It's either I'm praying I miss or I'm not praying enough. If you are praying right, praying the word, I'm praying insistent. Remember I said this kind of prayer, in supplication is a fervent, diligent entreaty. Especially when what, what I said last, I think everything I said, the last paragraph is the most important thing. Praying in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows where your answers are. He knows where your provision is. He knows who to get you to that provision. When we engage the Holy Ghost and know his personality as a friend in the place of prayer, you know, our life is easy. A lot of what we are trying to work out is with our mental faculty. And we are, we, 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 like I said, we have gaps in knowledge. We don't know everything. We don't know the course. We don't know the root cause. He knows it. So when we engage him in the place of prayer, it's easy. That's why when we pray, sometimes in encounter night, we pray in the spirit extensively. We pray and pray in the spirit, even though we know we need it. We need, I need a break, but I don't know everything about head, how the break will come and where the break will come from. That's where the Holy, Holy Ghost comes. Hallelujah. Praise God. I hope I answered that question. Engage the Holy Spirit. Engage his ministry. Thank Hallelujah. you. The next question. You talk about developing stamina to pray for several hours. But when I think about this stamina, this verse always comes to mind. Matthew 6, 7. When you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Um, how can you explain this? Thank you. Okay. I said something a few minutes ago. Jesus Christ, you know, the, the, Hosea 4, 6 is my people, God's people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. Ignorance, ignorance is costly. I used to think like that sister or that brother. I used to think like that. Why are we paying all this money? God knows our need before we ask. And then he says we shouldn't. Jesus Christ, the son of God. <laughs> Jesus Christ was born of the spirit. Is Mary was just a surrogate mother. He was impregnated of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that he, he spent all night praying. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. What was he praying about? Have you ever wondered? What would he, he was impregnated of the Holy Spirit. He had the Holy Spirit without measure. What was he spending? Luke 6, 12. He went into a mountain to pray and he continued all night in prayer to God. He did night vigil. God knew him now. What was he praying for? There are some things, there are some things that will not manifest unless there's this, on this kind of stamina in, and persistence and perseverance and consistence in prayer. Some of some things will not happen until this kind of prayers are done. Stamina to pray. It's not that you are, you are repeating the same thing. No. Sometimes even to, even to birth God's plan for your life. Because every person that was, is on this planet is born for a, for a mission, for an assignment, for an agenda. For you to birth that thing, you have to be in a place of prayer. Jesus spent 40 days praying and fasting. For what? I beg. He was impregnated of the Holy, of the Holy. He didn't need to, but he did. 
because there are some things that will not happen, that will not manifest, especially when it comes to changing and birthing that which you are appointed to do. You need to go back and pray and pray and pray some more and pray some more and pray some more. How, Lord, how? Pray, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost and talking, pray, talking, talking, understanding. Pray some more, pray some more. Like I said, I, I, made, I made mention of reset my seed. Why don't we just pray it once? Are we repeating ourselves? Why? Why? My little children, Galatians chapter four, I travail, I pray for you. I labor for you until Christ is formed in you. I think I've, I think I've, done, I, I've done that. Amen. Th thank you very much, Sister Fumi. So the next question says, each time I pray, things just seem to go wrong. Why is this? <laughs> for two things especially when you when you commit yourself to pray sometimes the enemy is trying to see whether you can stand it or not whether you have capacity for what you are saying so he brings one little thing and if it goes wrong we're saying ah you see that's why i don't pray I just let things go sera, sera, let it happen God, no he just wants to see whether you have what what material are you made of made from what can you really stand the test of time if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small you know when you go beyond the kindergarten stage that's when you know you have to spend time praying like i said discipline has nothing to do with what you see what you feel it's just a discipline you go to the gym in the morning in the every morning not because you see your muscles coming up but you go every day same in prayer you are reporting into the place of prayer because you want to develop stamina but you're not just praying to get things. You're not just praying for, sometimes we think when we pray, it's just to make things happen. It's just to, I'm just praying for my child. I'm just praying for my, uh, my job. No, life is more than that. You can spend time praying for the people in your church. Things go wrong because the enemy is trying to test what material you are made from. When you pray the word, especially, I don't mean you're just asking, you're complaining to God because sometimes we complain and we think we're praying. No. When you pray the word of, get the word of God. That's what prophetic prayers are about. Get the word of God about that situation. You are praying for your child. You have five scriptures you are praying about. You are praying, get the word of God. Pray those words and then pray in the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Next question reads, I have heard we should ask God for things to happen within a time frame. That is setting a date to see results. At the same time, we say God does things in his own time according to his plans. How do we balance this? You know that what says that God does things in his time according to his plans is not in the New Testament. Because that the right Ecclesiastes was saying every, for everything there's a time and a season. I'll give you an example because I do my chore singles. I have to talk about this. A, 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 a woman that is not married at 40, 50, God has no hand in it. What will God gain by delaying or prolonging that journey? Nothing. What happens a lot of time is that people set a time frame, but the requisite amount of power generate, that needs to be generated to back up that time frame is not there. So we speak a word. Just like Elijah said to Ahab, go, eat, sleep, and drink. For I hear the abundance of rain. Did he go and sleep? No, he spoke a word. But he stayed in prayer until the word came to pass. A lot of times we speak the word, but we, we, just, we speak the word that is back, not backed up with any spiritual energy. So the, he's, oh, it's going to happen in two days. And nothing happens. I'm like, ah, what's happened? You told me what's going to... Because the, the power to back up that word, the spiritual energy is not there. So it's just a few words, nothing. There are no angels mobilized to activate it. So when you say I give a date, I want this thing to happen with this, this time frame. I see that thing in the word. It's my birthright. I see that it should happen. And I say it should happen within this time frame. Don't just say it should go and happen and go and sleep. Because immediately you told God, God, God said, okay, you have it. But we have oppositions. We have an enemy who will do anything to delay, prolong the journey. 
So when you speak to, when you pray again, you're not praying to God. You are praying to say, get your hands off. God has given me that property. God has given me this. He's given me a spouse. He's given me a child. Get your hands off. Get your hands off. Until you get that thing to pray, especially praying in the Holy Ghost. I don't know why I'm emphasizing that. Praying in the Holy Spirit is our accelerator in the journey of life. We must train ourselves to pray extensively in the Holy Spirit, especially in the days we are in. The days we are in are wicked. They are mean. So for a Christian to shine and persistently shine, you need this amount of, this type of prayers. For your business to flourish, for your God to spotlight you. Hallelujah. You need this kind of persistence and diligence in prayer. Please, I'm, 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 I have to make this appeal. When we say praying, it's not because we, <laughs> there are so many things competing for your prayer life. Legitimate things competing for your prayer life. Prioritizing our prayers in the days we're in is what will give us exemption from what's going on around the world. There is a season of destruction going on. But this kind of prayers is what activates our preservation, our protection, because God has given. God has already given everything that we need to live a fulfilled and a successful Christian life. He's not about to do it. He's already given Jesus. Jesus had died. But we need to appropriate it. What, 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 what grace has provided, we need to possess. Faith must possess. Grace does not mean faith is in redundance. No. Praying does not mean we are nullifying grace. We are enforcing. We are legislating. We are mandating what grace has already provided. Grace has provided my healing. I'm not going to be sick one more day in my life. Grace has provided my provision. I will never be broke. I don't care what the interest rate. Those are the kind of prayers we pray at this point in time. Insisting in partnership with the Holy Spirit that I'm going to receive all that has, all he has paid for. It's very easy to watch Netflix. It's very, very, very easy. Hallelujah. Do I have any more questions? Yes, thank you. Um, is, it, is it God we keep asking for the answer to our prayer or are we demanding that the devil gives up that which belongs to us when we play, pray repeatedly? Pray repeatedly. Remember Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7, 7. It says, ask. Ask. I think the, the amplifier says, ask. It's a, the Greek word is demand. Are you demanding from God? You're not demanding from God. God has already given. What are you going to demand from me? He's giving your healing. He's giving your provision. He's given everything when he sent Jesus to the cross. So he's not the one we are demanding on for say. We need the, the person that delays. Every delay. Every long-standing issue we are facing. Every challenge. Prolonged. It's not from God. No. What for? Natural parents cannot do that to their children. How much more? The enemy is the thief. The enemy is the destroyer. The enemy is the afflictor. And you remember what James chapter 5 says? Is any among you afflicted? It, which means it's, you shouldn't have been. But if you are, let him pray. Let him pray and tell, get your hands off my stuff. There is nothing that we need that is in heaven. God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Every promise of God is yes and amen. He's given immediately. But we have an adversary. He's defeated, but he's not dead. He's an outlaw. He wants to play, play to see if he, would, if he will receive it. But when he knows your stand and you stand and stand and keep standing and say, no, I'm going to stand until this child is made whole. I'm going to stand until this provision comes. I'm going to stand until this boy serves God. I'm going to stand until this ministry flourish. I'm going to stand. Immediately you keep standing in prayer, you have won. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, so we're running out of time. So 
want, I want to ask you the next question, if you could do it in about two minutes, please. So okay. how do we pray in the Holy Spirit asked by a novice? And I'd want to link that to another, a separate question that says, do you have to, do we have to speak in tongues to develop stamina? So if it, so the first part of the question was, so how do we pray in the Holy Spirit asked by a novice Christian? And then do we have to speak in tongues to develop stamina? So if you could combine both of them, thank you. The Holy, speaking in tongues is a gift. Acts chapter one, verse eight. He says, we receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. And if you read the Acts of the, whoever asks that question, just read the book of Acts, which is the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The first part of it says, you, 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 he, Jesus himself said, don't go anywhere. Just wait. John 14, 15, just wait until the Holy Ghost will come. And when he comes, this is what he will do. He will show you things to come. He causes the Allos paraclete, the paraclete, which is exactly like him. Jesus could only be in one place at one time, but the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at the same time. He's not constrained by time. He's not constrained by location, like Jesus was. So Jesus, ah, you need this Holy Ghost. So if you read everywhere in the book of John, where Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, he says, you need him. You need him. He will show you. He will help you. Yeah. And then when Paul was writing to the Corinthian church, he says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men. He speaks unto God. No man understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, hidden secrets. You are, you are speaking God's plan. You are speaking God's blueprint for your life. You are, his roadmap for your life is being unveiled when you speak in the Holy Spirit. It's not so I, 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 was, I, was, I was ministering one time in Switzerland and one lady said to me, why? I mean, this Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit you are talking about. I don't believe everybody should speak in tongues. I say, it's true. You are, everybody's entitled to your opinion. But you know what? If I was going from here to Manchester, I can either go on a scooter or go on a bike or go in a Ferrari. Which one would you prefer? Which one is faster? The Ferrari will get there faster. Rather than spend spinning wheels, praying in your understanding, pray that you don't know everything. You don't know every, you. We, we act like I keep saying we have gaps in knowledge. We don't know everything. You don't know with the root cause. You think you know, but he knows. He knows this thing you're dealing with. Mm, you need multivitamins. No, there's no need to pray. But for you to even find that out, you need to pray. You need to spend time. Should I? I remember we read a testimony in a counter night one time about a lady who had a problem. I don't know if you remember um, um, my sisters. And she had prayed and prayed and prayed. And the Holy Spirit said, go take vitamin E. Do you get what I mean? He knows the answer. So when you partner with him, when you come into alignment with him diligently, every time, every day, your life will be easy because you don't keep tripping over yourself. He says, no, don't go, don't go out, don't go through that road today. There's a lot of traffic. Stay at home. That's so for me, but he has just saved you three hours. First Corinthians 14, 15. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and when I will pray with my understanding also. The understanding, especially when you stand alone to pray, can be the also. You don't know everything. Likewise, the spirit helps our infirmities, our limitations, our constraints. He knows it. Romans 8, 26. Isaiah 28 is one of my favorite scriptures. 10 to 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people. To whom he says, this is the rest. This is the rest. Where we may cause the weary to rest. You've labored enough, come into the rest. And this is the refreshing, but they will not hear. That's what Isaiah says. Hallelujah. I think we've run out of time. Amen. We truly are out of time, but we're craving your indulgence, please, to give us five minutes more. No um, I guess it's just the topic. So the last two questions are really one question. So I'll read them both out, but they are the same question. So one person says, I don't always know where to find the word of God that relates to certain situations and therefore may not be praying in accordance with God. And the second question is, what is the best way to find the right Bible verses to pray for specific situations. How do you know if that is the right verse for your situation? Go online, sis. Please. Just go online. See, ask Siri. This we live in a very easy world. Just go to Google, Bible Gateway, type what you are looking for. Children, 
all the verses with children will come out. You are looking for a job. Put in, just say, provision, you see there. Supply, you will see there. Just, the, if you are not conversant with the concordance, this, I know this is old school. I know people like all my, some of my brethren on here, we started with the strongs. And people like me like my strongs, but not everybody can do that anymore. This is a new generation. Everything is online. Strong concordance is online. The concordance, concordances are online. Just go online and look for what you're, I need to pray for deliverance. Where do I get the scriptures? What scripture buttress is this? Look for five good ones that are, especially in the New Testament, that tell you what you are looking for. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. He made a curse for me. For his, you get a few of them. He has delivered me from the power of darkness and translated me to the, just look for a few of them. It's all there in the New Testament, especially because our dispensation is the New Testament. Although the, the blessings of the Old Testament still belongs to us. Anyway, that's for another class. I'm not sure if I answered that question. Just, just, you can just go online, it's there. Wow. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. <laughs> I can't get my eyes away from this screen. It's just so amazing. The things that you have, you have managed to pack in. I don't know how you do it, Minister Fumi. You have packed in so many sessions into one. God bless you real good. And God bless everyone that has joined tonight. I want you to know that you have come to partake of such a wonderful, wonderful um, provision of God, if you ask me. God has sent us a real good word tonight. And also to remind you that this teaching will be it will be up for your own um referencing you can go to our uh go to our youtube channel all the classes are recorded and and afford yourself this wonderful wonderful resource amen we're just gonna pray and we will be back in two weeks time on the on the third second thursday no this is the second thursday of the month on the fourth thursday of this month we'll be right back that's exactly two weeks time we'll be right back to um and Sister Fumi will be here again to minister to us. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for such a wonderful diet, balanced diet of your word concerning prayer. We ask that your spirit will walk in us as he always does, walk in us to produce fruit and many, many manifestations of the word that we have heard tonight, that the glory might be yours and the edification and, and the enjoyment might be ours in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. And we will see you exactly two weeks time, same place, same time. Look out for, uh, for yeah, look out for the reminders and we will be right here to share the word with you. God bless you and good night. See you.